ever noticed how similar Homer and Krusty the Clown are? It's even more evident when Krusty is shown without makeup on or in the episode Homer the Clown where they look more or less identical. Well, this is not sheer coincidence, in fact it's a defining part of Krusty's character and a key element for the relationship between Krusty, Homer and Bart. Because while Bart show no respect for his father and is just a brat there of his name, he idolizes Krusty the Clown. It's meant to show that even though they both look the same and share an almost equal level of stupidity and pure silliness, he treats them differently. In fact, before the show began, they planned for Homer to actually be Krusty the Clown as a sort of secret identity. Just like most other animated shows, The Simpsons uses something called a floating timeline, in which the characters never physically age and as such, the show is generally assumed to be set in the current year. But they still have an age though, of course, for example Bart is 10 and Maggie is 1. So if all the characters had aged normally since the show began, Homer and March would now be around 60 years old. Bart would be 35, Lisa 32 and Maggie would be 26 and Mr. Burns would be over 120 years old. In the very beginning, Marge Simpson's hairstyle was designed that way because in the last episode of the first season, they planned on revealing that underneath was a pair of bunny ears. This was of course changed before the reveal, but it can still be seen in some sprite art for the Simpsons arcade game. Between 1991 and 1993, Conan O'Brien was actually a writer and producer for the show. In fact, a few of the episodes Conan produced are regarded as some of the most memorable and finest episodes overall. He is also credited as the key influence for the series' rapid shift in direction from grounded realism towards surreal and more eccentric plots after he wrote the episode March vs. the Monorail. Several of the characters in the show almost always go by their nicknames. Their full names are often revealed through easter eggs and special episodes in the show. Some examples are Marjorie Jacqueline Simpson, Bartholomew Jojo Simpson, Abraham J. Jedediah Simpson II, Jeffrey Albertson, Eleanor Abernathy, Robert Underdunk Tervillinger Jr., Herschel Schmeichel Pinchas Jerusham Krustovsky and Apu Nahasapimapetilon. What? No wonder everyone has a fucking nickname. Homer is the only character to have dialogue in every single episode. March and Lisa have appeared in every episode, but they didn't have dialogue in one episode each. Bart is the only of the four main characters not to have been seen or mentioned for an entire episode. Not counting Maggie, of course, because, you know, she suck. Mr. Burns Devoted Assistant Smithers was originally going to be a black gay man with purple hair, which can actually be seen in the third episode from season 1. The reason they opted not to do this though was because they felt that a black assistant which is extremely loyal and almost submissive towards the superior might be seen as something else. On the contrary, the police officer Lou had yellow skin in season 1. The word Meh. It's a word used as an expression of indifference or boredom. It's often regarded as a verbal shrug. The reason I'm bringing this up is because The Simpsons actually helped to popularize the word back in the mid to late 90s. The origin of the word is somewhat inconclusive, but before The Simpsons started using it, it was more or less unheard of. Pretty interesting, right? In the episode Tree House of Horror 6, Homer is transported into a 3D world, and in one scene you'll find a string of hexadecimal numbers displayed behind him. When converted into ASCII, these numbers read Frink Rules, in reference to Professor Frink. Homer's hair and ear sometimes forms the initials M and G, which of course stands for Matt Groening. Form an M and a G. Up until season 20, the opening sequence display Maggie's worth to be a $847.63. Matt has stated that this was the average monthly cost of raising a baby at the time. But ever since season 20, the groceries are first worth $243.26, with Maggie then doubling it. 
no one seems to be quite sure what these numbers mean or if they mean anything at all, for that matter. In nearly every establishing shot of the power plant, a crow can be heard. This was even marked in one episode when the power plant moves to India and instead of a crow, a cow can be heard. Ever since the show began in 1989, fans have speculated about exactly where the show takes place. Because if we do a quick Google search, we'll find that there are a lot of towns and places named Springfield in the United States. Being the perfectionist I am, I went the extra mile and, or actually fuck your customary units, I went the extra kilometer and counted and marked each and every individual location I could find. In total, the US has 31 Springfields. And this is also the point. The show's creator Matt Groening has said that he intentionally chose the name Springfield because he knew it was one of the most common town and county names in the US. In other words, Springfield was never meant to have an exact location from the very beginning. However, in an interview from 2012, Matt actually revealed for the first time that Springfield in the show is based on Springfield, Oregon. Then again, it isn't that much of a surprise given that he grew up in Portland only a few kilometers away.